Hey, I'm Sal and uh, I am a transformational mindset life coach as well as a kinesiologist. And today I'm here with Prosper on the online prosperity show. And I'm really excited to be sharing some really amazing information about getting out of anger and resentment and feeling like you're obligated and have to in life and uh, perhaps feeling a little bit shut down or loss of confidence and self-belief. Now, welcome to yet another exciting episode of the Online Prosperity Show. And today we've got none other than Sally. Sally, how are you doing today? I'm wonderful. Thank you, Prosper. And it's such a, an honor to be here with you today. And yes, I'm really looking forward to it. Understandable. Well, we're so excited because Sally here is a transformational mindset coach. And she's also a professional kinesiology practitioner who has two adoring uh, teenage girls. And she actually believes that life has a way of waking us up when we need it the most. Now, Thank you so much for, um, you know, uh, allowing us to find out a little bit about yourself so that you can let us know how we can be awoken by life when we actually need it the most. What does that actually mean there, Sally? So I think that life really has a way of shaking us up at times. And sometimes we can be quite resistant to those events happening as well. And it can be something small, uh, like it, it might be uh, just a challenging situation that you're having in a relationship, or it could be um, that your car breaks down somewhere, or it could be something a little bit more dramatic, whether it's a car accident or whether it's uh, loss of a job or breakdown of a relationship or um, so many different experiences in life, I think make us really stop and evaluate where we're actually at and also what's most important to us as well. So that's where I think, you know, life comes in and sometimes slaps us around a little bit and certainly did to me because I wasn't living my truth um, or being authentic in who I was as a person. So had some big lessons to learn. <laughs> Great stuff. Okay, so I see you brought us flowers today. You're looking absolutely <laughs> fantastic, but it wasn't always like that, right? No, no, absolutely not. It, uh, it was really quite challenging. Um, basically, my life lessons were back in uh, 2008, and I still continue. It's not that I don't get the life lessons now, I, uh, but back in 2008, I had two significant events that really shook me up and uh, really pulled away the foundations of how I'd been living my life. And uh, that was my marriage breaking down. And shortly after my mum actually passed away. And with that experience, um, I realized I had no clue at all how to love myself. And uh, I really was very critical and very negative within myself. And I had my two beautiful girls who were age six and eight at the time. And it was really challenging because uh, I knew desperately inside who I wanted to be as a mum and yet I knew that I wasn't actually showing up that way and so when these experiences happened it was like well Sal if you're going to pick yourself up and you're going to keep going you're going to have to figure out how to love yourself and how to be able to move forward and really create this life that you're wanting to for your girls so uh, that was what I did I started yeah just getting out and about reading a lot of positive books and uh, getting to lots of Tony Robbins events and lots of you know any positivity uh, kind of things and, and actually retrained uh, and started in my path as a kinesiologist as well so that was all brand new and uh, I started that in 2009 after those big life events that happened because I knew that I had to find a different way forward because what I've been currently doing was not working so wow okay so to say that life gave you a gentle slip is totally an understatement um, <laughs> How, how have these events now made you examine every part of your life? Uh, I think when we have something significant like that, like a marriage breakdown or, you know, the loss of a loved one. And, and my mum and I were particularly close because she was like a sister and a friend and a mum all rolled into one. It really made me evaluate. I think particularly like when we lose a mum, um, it makes you really evaluate who well, for me, like who I want to be as a mum. And she was a wonderful role model in so many ways. Um, and both her and my dad had been wonderfully successful in business. 
as well as being um, really great in terms of being there to support us and to uh, like on an emotional level as well, which is not always the case. Um, so I was, had a very, very blessed childhood, um, but it really made me really re-examine things. And then with the breakdown of my marriage, I knew I'd been living this false life. It was, I was trying to be someone who I really wasn't. And I was so caught in the pleaser behaviors because I was desperate for love. So I was doing all the running around. I was trying to be the perfect housewife. And yet I was just miserable and so empty and lost and alone inside. And so it really, when all that had been stripped away, it was like, a very scary clean slate <laughs> it was like there was nothing there so it was like made me look at well if I had to start over again which was essentially what I was doing what do I now choose to actually put in and paint the new picture that I'm going to create for myself so that was what I did and and it really made me tap into my heart and my soul and uh, my core authentic self it was like I pulled away all the layers which was really scary and left me feeling really raw and vulnerable and um, stepping into my role as a kinesiologist like I don't know if you guys know where Wagga is but I am seriously like in a very outback kind of <laughs> central rural community that's based on footy and beer <laughs> so to bring in natural therapies like kinesiology was just so unheard of like seven eight years ago there was um at the time one other lady that i was aware of that was practicing um and her goal in life was to be as eccentric as possible and she's so beautiful like she's my whole reason that i got into kinesiology um but i really wanted to bring in 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 a way where uh, common people could really just start to when I say common people everyday people that weren't necessarily eccentric <laughs> um, wanted to to be able to feel better and have access to some of those tools as well so sorry it ended up a very <laughs> long no <laughs> that's absolutely fantastic because obviously um, in life we're here to learn and we're also here to leave and also be of value to others so you have learned all these um lessons so you know you are now in a position to actually teach other people so that they do not fall into uh the sort of traps that you went off to so you did mention that you you were feeling a little bit closed off and you were really exhausted and you were shut uh shut down to the world now you know exactly how that feels like how can somebody who might be in your position or going through what you're going through you know maybe come out a winner like you are smiling and looking all nice with flowers all around you what 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 did you do in order to um you know find that balance yeah i think that's a really really great question prosper and it certainly didn't happen overnight so i think that's key um and uh, it's something that uh, yeah we just spoke about before in terms of instant gratification or looking for the magic bullet or looking for the quick fix my life has literally evolved over the last nine years because of the hard work and dedication and commitment to growth and becoming a better person um but that starts with a vision so you First of all, it's, it is getting clear on what is that end picture for yourself. Um, in, and when I say end picture, it continues to evolve as well. So a couple of years ago, I actually reached that vision. I wanted to um, hit a six figure income. I wanted to wake up and drink green smoothies and be doing yoga and going for long runs. And a couple of years ago, I woke up on my 38th birthday, literally, I went, oh my goodness. This is like the best birthday present ever because I realized that I'd finally become the person that I'd always dreamed that I wanted to be. And it was just, there was nothing in my day that I would have changed. I was still seeing kinesiology clients, which I loved and I'm super passionate about um, and doing all of those things. So first of all is create the vision. Second is why, why do you want that? Why is that super, super important to you? Um, what will it cost you if you don't start to step forward and create these changes? So if you stay stuck for another two to five years, you know, what is that going to cost you mentally, emotionally, spiritually, uh, physically, like all of that stress creates so much um, pain for your physical well-being as well. Um, and then after you're clear on that, start to write down a bit of a, um, a brainstorm around um, and, and it's making sure that you don't kind of limit things with, well, I haven't got the time to do that or I haven't got the money to do that or any of those things. It really is creating this um, just 
yes and yes and yes and and then what we actually do afterwards so you just create this big list all the things that you could do to actually start to create that vision and then what you actually want to do is use the 80 20 principle which is um i'm sure you guys have probably heard that before if you're part of um prosper's tribe it's the 80 20 you know 20 percent gets you 80 percent of the results so 20 percent of what we do every single day will actually be the key things that actually drive you forward in a really really powerful way as well a lot of the time we kind of get lost in the to-do list or thinking that we've got to check off all these things without actually realizing that actually there's probably a couple of key things that will build a really solid foundation for you now for me that was getting positive audio in every single day I literally had to drown out my negative thoughts so I would plug into whatever and I thought you know a couple of weeks you know I'd be all set no it took me six months I literally it was shocked me how long it took me to really start to rewire the way that I thought about things and it was funny because six months later things would happen and I'd I'd almost go back to the old thinking and then something from one of the audios that I would have listened to just kicked in. It's like, no, I've got to look at this differently. Okay, how can I do that? So that was one of my positive things. Um, exercising, taking really great care of myself physically was another thing that was absolutely key in the foundation to really getting myself back on track and starting to nurture and love myself, not from a place of I'm ugly or I'm fat or I need to do this because I'm overweight or anything like that. It was a pure what do I need to nurture myself and to fill my bucket up and to feel a sense of joy? And a lot of people have trouble with doing those things simply because there's a feeling of, I don't want to be selfish or particularly if we've got kids, you know, there can be the feeling of guilt, you know, I don't want to take time out or I should be spending time with the kids. And my philosophy is, you know, how do you want to be role modeling what you're giving your kids permission to subconsciously? So when they become parents, do you want them to think that they've got to be a martyr and just absolutely run themselves into the ground? Or do you want them to know that they can take time out for them? And when they feel fantastic, they can be the best parent to their kids as well. So that's kind of the way that I overcome some of that guilt and some of those emotions as well. So, um, but yeah, brainstorm, pick out your top two to three and then start to implement and action those. Great. If somebody sees you today, they might just start thinking or believing you are the luckiest woman ever. All right. And <laughs> or if not, you hide it too well. Now, you have managed to, um, you know, create a vision for your life. You've managed uh, to find your why and succumb your limitation. And you did at some point find um, wonderful men in your life, and et cetera, et cetera. Is this, is this it or is there more that we can expect from you? Oh no, there's way more prosper. <laughs> so I think that's part of life. It's and it's not from a place of, you know, I'm I'm not happy with what I've got or I'm ungrateful or anything else. I think from a soul perspective, for me, um, it really is about that continued growth and that contribution now. Um, I think, you know, number one, if each person just individually took responsibility for where they're at and their own life um, and their own happiness, then you know we, we don't get so entwined and entangled and enmeshed in issues with wanting other people to be different or things like that. So once we take that responsibility, then it's about empowering others and really um, stepping that up. So I'm really excited. Um, tomorrow night, I'm actually running my second teenage girls program. Uh, so I ran one uh, in Narendra a couple of weeks ago um, where we had 90 girls attend and that was just fabulous and it's all about giving that sense of confidence um, and giving them the emotional tools so that they know that they don't have to um, stay with their negative thinking and, and be stuck uh, like I was so basically I wrote the course uh, from the perspective of it's everything that I wish that I knew when I was 13 but I learned when I was 32 <laughs> so it's like <laughs> giving them a little head start and I'm excited for my girls they're 14 and 16 um, so for them to, to be able to access these tools and have those tools as well now at their age, I just think that's incredibly powerful um, to be able to, to continue changing your life. And, um, and then it, it's just a natural given, I think, you know, when we've got ourselves back on track, you know, what is it that we can do then to, 
to help and inspire the world um, to, to step into their own vision, whatever that is for them. And each person's got their own individual journey around that. So um, for me personally, like my big, really big vision is definitely taking the Teenage Girls Program globally. Um, and initially, definitely Australia-wide though. So uh, as I start to roll out more and more programs, I'll be um, traveling to regional centers in Australia. And uh, I'm in the process of building an online uh, membership site as well that the girls can tap into as an additional resource um, for a really nominal fee each month as well, where um, they'll be able to do it either with or without attending the actual on, um, live event as well, which I think will be really helpful for girls that are perhaps a little bit more remote and can't get to a, uh, a seminar, which will be great. So Great stuff. So obviously you're teaching from a position of experience you're teaching from a position of being a mother too so this would definitely uh, coincide with the teenage girls that you are uh, teaching how important is it for girls these days to actually have a role model because you did mention that the people that you're helping are in the age group of like 13 and upwards and um, you had to go all of these through all of these troubles and had to learn at 32 how much of a difference would what you're teaching them make in their lives if they learn these things early oh i just think it it changes everything prosper it really does um from right down from the relationships that we attract and allow ourselves to um when i say allow ourselves to have the way that we actually allow ourselves to be treated as well um, when you have self-love when you have that confidence you know you know when things aren't okay or you know when things um you know you can say no you've got the confidence to say no and uh, to be able to really build a life like I said that you love you can fail and pick yourself up and keep going so it builds so much resilience so much inner strength and inner confidence and I think when you get to that point where it's just like you've built that self-belief and that confidence through doing some smaller things first and I quite often use like a bit of an analogy around running so um, when I started to get fit, I, my whole, only goal was to run two kilometers and I nailed that. And then it was like, okay, well, maybe I can go for five. And so then I did the five and then I did the 10 and then I did the 22 and then went on to do triathlons and triathlons were never <laughs> in the vision for the two Ks. And it just, it goes to show, you know, how we can grow and evolve and how our dreams are grow and evolve with us as well. And the more that we give ourselves permission to step into that space of self-love i think you know we give from a place of fulfillment and contentment which only energizes us as opposed to giving out of have to need to should obligation and living a life of anger and resentment and to be honest that was where i lived a lot of my life because i was in that pleaser you know i have to give so that people will like me or love me whereas now it's it's i get to give um, because it's just who i am and because i feel so great so it's self-love i think it, it really um, builds such a solid foundation for um not only what we'll accept in our life but also what we can attract and what we can um yeah go on to to create for ourselves and that self-confidence so Absolutely. And I can tell you're exuding all that confidence in the way you present yourself. And you're also confident in your, um, you know, um, achievements, because uh, at some point I heard you were one of Scott Harris' top UC Pro accredited coaches, right? <laughs> yes, I am. <laughs> Great stuff. Congratulations on that. Now, how do you constantly... Um, you know, update your knowledge because we're moving, um, like you say, it's always a moving target. And, you know, the people that we're dealing with, they're being subjected to new influences through technology and stuff like that. How are you also staying on top of your, um, you know, knowledge and life experiences so that you can help your clients and inspire them to have self-love? Yeah, that's a great question, Prosper. And it's something that I'm truly passionate about. And I definitely uh, credit to so much, um, of my uh, my success as well moving forward is investing in myself. Uh, so I work with a wonderful business coach uh, and I've to date invested 
over 150,000 in my own uh, knowledge, in courses, in books, uh, in getting the training that I need to be able to support and help people um, in a really, really great way. So as a single mum, it was definitely a significant stretch and yet I knew that it was the only way forward. Uh, so I have done like a lot of uh, Tony Robbins courses, definitely, um, like you mentioned, um, being a UC Pro accredited coach with Scott Harris and he's a dear friend and mentor. Uh, so I, I'm feel incredibly blessed around that uh, and the other thing that I do as well is really just checking with my audience so quite often I will um, send out personal messages and just check in with them hey what do you challenge you know what do you think uh, uh, women are most challenged with these days uh, what do you think that teenagers are challenged with and really get some feedback and response I think it's so important to be communicating uh, with your audience to find out what it is that they need so that we can figure out a way together, you know, how to best support them um, to be able to move forward as well. So I hope that answers your question. <laughs> no, definitely. Wow. This is, this is truly amazing because you have just taught us in a space of um, the time we've been watching this, how to truly love yourself and to actually create amazing relationships that will fully embrace all that you can be. Now, Sally, we cannot thank you enough. Now, if somebody would have been watching this um, show and wants to get in touch with you, you did mention you've got a daily gratitude group, all ways that people can get a hold of you, right? Absolutely. Yeah. So I really encouraged uh, the daily gratitude group is a wonderful uh, and complimentary way of really um, starting to, I guess, have a, a taste of what I'm about and experience. I quite often do live videos on there. I'm definitely all about adding lots of value. And I think gratitude is one of the key, most powerful emotions that we can actually uh, use to propel us forward in a really powerful way in life as well. Uh, when we have, um, when, when we have gratitude for what we've already got, what we've already got is enough and it just attracts more and more of the really great stuff into our life. So yeah, people are more than welcome uh, to join uh, me there or to contact me uh, via my website, which is just sallyholden.com.au um, or definitely um, reach out on Facebook. I'm more than happy to, to have a conversation and I do have uh, some high level uh, personal coaching clients as well. Uh, but yeah, so if, if you're looking to really invest in yourself and move forward you know that you've got some big changes uh, to make in your life I think definitely investing um, and, and it, it was a huge fear of mine uh, to invest that money and a lot of guilt and things like that came up and yet I know had I personally invested that in something else whether that was stocks or shares there's no way that I would be the quarter of a person that I am, but also even on a financial level as well, I've been able to leverage that in some very powerful ways as well. So uh, for me personally, investing in myself has been the single most important investment that I've ever made in my life. So, yeah. Understandable. Well, it does show that you did put in a lot of work and whoever was watching, I hope they have been uplifted and they've been inspired and also empowered. I cannot thank you enough, uh, Sally, for, you know, taking your time off your busy schedule uh, to spend some time with us today. Thank you so much, Prosper. It's really been such a privilege and honor to be with you. And I've really enjoyed our time together as well. So thank you. Understandable. Now, if you've been watching this and you're wondering how you can actually get yourself out of, you know, the self-doubt or whatever you might be going through, Sally is inviting you to actually start loving yourself and start creating amazing relationships that will fully embrace all that you can be. And if you have really enjoyed uh, what we've got um, here with Sally, why not join her daily inspiration group or daily gratitude group? And uh, I will put all the links in the bottom there. Now, if you haven't also subscribed to this channel, make sure you do so that you can start having a life um, that's full of abundance and you can actually start enjoying yourself. Sally, thank you so much once again. And hopefully we um, have people coming in to join your daily gratitude group. Group. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Prosper. You have a great day. <laughs> great stuff. Thank you so much. For, for me, now you've got to introduce this show. Um, obviously, you know, if people see you, your pretty face, then they'll want to watch it. If 
If you mess it up, then nobody wants to watch this show. So it's all on you. <laughs> right? So you want to say, <laughs> hi, my name is Sally, um, um, uh, the transformational coach. And we've, you're just about to watch the online prosperity show. I'm going to tell you about, you know, whatever it is that you, you, you talked about on the show now that yeah. you know what you mentioned. So it's just like a three, four second introduction. Okay. So this yeah. is, this then decides if I, if I publish this or not. 